time to finish this. Kill the bastard, right now. Jeffrey Hawk makes his move, rounds the corner of his trailer. He squints, sees footprints in the soft ground. Bingo. Crouches low, belly skimming over the dirt. A crowd roars from the circus tent 300 yards away. He uses the sounds to conceal his movement. Then he sees it, the shadow of his chosen victim. Focus. Bring on the Carnival of Carnage. He shifts his weight to his back foot and springs. I'll shred you up good, you son of a bitch! He grabs the raccoon, ripping the creature from his trash can. They tumble. Garbage spills to the ground, sharp pain and dull discomfort as he rolls through broken glass, cigarette butts, and half-eaten corn dogs. This is the last time you invade my trash! The raccoon twists, snaps at air until finding a fat chunk of flesh. Ah, damn it! Jeffrey loses his grip, recovers just in time to grab a bushy tail. He's on the defensive, swings the animal around, whirling it like a lasso. He loses his grip. The raccoon soars through the air, reaching incredible heights. The squealing, thrashing silhouette of the woodland creature flies over the backdrop of a full moon. Majestic. It arcs downwards and lands safely in a tree. Blast it all to hell! With a furious hiss, the raccoon scurries into the foliage and disappears. Scram, you hairball! Touch my garbage again and I'll make a balloon animal out of your intestines! He wipes a smear of blood onto his pants. A blaring of trumpets rings through the night, coming from the circus tent in the distance. The acrobats are taking the stage. He had nearly forgotten his plan. There's hope for this night yet. Jeffrey hurries into the circus tent, anticipation buzzing through his veins. He stands at the back of the bleachers, avoiding the gawking, idiotic crowd. All eyes are glued to the trapeze artist swinging above. Ha! <sighs> they have no idea. The best comedy is unexpected, and only Jeffrey knows the punchline. He greased the second trapeze an hour ago. Spotlights, a drum roll, the acrobat flips through the air, grabs the next trapeze, and whoops, slips right off. Down, down, splat. The sudden and exhilarating crunch of breaking bones, but nothing compares to the splat. The splat makes it all worth it, like a ripe tomato thrown against the wall, and then silence. A hundred people in shock. Trauma forming in their brains, future nightmares being scripted. The moment broken by a single woman's scream, followed by a hundred more, Jeffrey can't hold it in any longer. He bellows laughter, nearly suffocates with glee. No one can hear over the turmoil. Half the crowd rushes to the exit, needing air, needing to be sick, needing a stiff drink. What a show! Jeffrey chuckles, wipes his tears, and then... Oh my. His eyes glaze over. So many fingers pass by. Hundreds of them. He's a kid in a candy shop and the possibilities are measured by the handful. He's paralyzed with indecision. As the crowd streams by, he appraises their hands. Long fingers, stout fingers, pristine and ugly. Don't be greedy now. You get one. Gotta keep things quiet. The fuzz will be snooping after the trapezist's accident. He spots a candidate worth his attention. Three inches on the left hand of a young woman. Smoother knuckles than the norm. What does it taste like? Candy apple, maybe. Or brass. Why brass? With considerable effort, the memory arises. A first grade teacher with a similar finger who used to wear cheap rings. He was a brat, but she was too hard on him. A burst of endorphins tickles his spine. How would he immortalize this stand-in for his first grade teacher? A sharpened pencil to her jugular? Stupid, obvious, pandering to irony, but also satisfying in its cartoonish simplicity. Wait, what about the plump man with plump fingers? Thick sausages ready to burst with the slightest pinprick. A reminder of the mailman who yelled at him for flinging dog crap at a car. 
bastard. I was just a kid having fun. Could fry up that finger and feed it to the local mutt. The fantasy is liberating. A righting of wrongs. And then, he sees it. The one. He shudders, recoils like he's seen a ghost, but is suddenly drawn to it, unable to look away. It's the finger he's always searched for, always longed to make his own. Attached to a hand, to an arm, to a man with a very stupid mustache. He has found it. The Finger of Chaos. Jeffrey is fixated on the mustached man's finger as he walks by. So close he can taste the alcohol-soaked sweat between the joints. He knew a finger just like it in a different life, before the circus. He's seven years old, in his bedroom, playing with a plastic army man. He throws it against the wall, bites its head till his tooth hurts. But then, the unexpected. Chaos awakens. His father shouts from the living room with a booming voice. Jeffrey retreats to his closet. He hears his father coming down the hall, each step louder. Hide! He buries himself under a pile of dirty clothes and shuts his eyes. The closet door swings open. The odor of cheap beer floods in as a large hand grabs him, pulls him. Why? Why, you little shit? Branson says you kicked his damn dog. That true? Jeffrey's too afraid to say the words forming in his head. It's true. I wallop the smelly mutt good. Don't know why. Just something like a reaction. Don't get twisted about it. Ain't nothing different I could have done. His father shoves his finger straight into Jeffrey's face. Speak up, you damned idiot! You think I want to be stuck with you? The finger. Thick, oddly straight. A knuckle with ridges upon ridges of loose skin. A chipped nail that lends it personality. Your mom would have hated you. You listening? Jeffrey can't look his father in the eyes. He retreats to his imagination. Hack off his finger, Jeffrey. Make dad cry. Make the blood spurt. Point the finger right back in his face and laugh. Laugh, Jeffrey. His father looks ready to burst as his face reddens. This funny to you? You some kind of clown? Keep laughing and see what happens. And though Jeffrey fears his punishment, he can't get the bloody thoughts out of his head, so he laughs and laughs. Jeffrey examines Mustache's finger as the crowd jostles around the circus tent. On his hand, a finger, thick, oddly straight, knuckles with ridges of loose skin, and yes, even a chipped nail. It may not be the original, but damn, it'll do nicely. Jeffrey barrels through the crowd, keeping an eye on the mustached man and his index finger. He pushes a lady aside, strong arms a man. Move along, you jerks! Everyone's too disturbed by the acrobat's death to be upset by a clown's social faux pas. It'll be days before it crosses anyone's mind. Did that clown really elbow an old woman in the face? Jeffrey spots mustache walking through the fairgrounds. Tents, ferris wheels, and food booths have gone dark, closed for the night. The scent of deep fryers and popcorn is still thick in the air. Mustache breaks from the crowd. Perfect. Time to get to work. Jeffrey disappears into cover. Despite his size, despite his bright, gaudy clothing, he naturally slinks through the shadows. His anger over the raccoon infiltrating his garbage has fizzled away. There is only one creature of the night that lives here. His name is Jeffrey Hawk. The hunt begins. This is Jeffrey's moment. The anger and revulsion fades, if only for a few minutes, allowing him to exist in comfort. He doesn't stumble or slow as he stalks through the deep darkness, takes sure, steady steps. He wants to remember this moment. It's simple. One man with a wonderful finger. One clown that's going to kill him. If only that was the whole of history, the entirety of existence. Wipe out the jealousy, betrayal, and greed. The tax collectors and nosy neighbors. The dogs that bark all night. The women who lead men on. The endless stream of cars and the suitcases full of lies. Erase the whole overwhelming thing. The pain that ties it together. He doesn't want to be part of it. He was never good at it anyway. 
leave one simple moment, a clown, a man, and a murder. He's jolted from his tranquility as a branch snaps underneath his foot. Thirty paces ahead, Mustache straightens up like a meerkat, swings his head around. He knows something's out there, something unseen. Hello? Please, someone there? I don't know what's happening. Jeffrey chuckles. <clears throat> Neither do I. Jeffrey keeps to the shadows, makes his way closer to Mustache. He moves swiftly, silently. Almost silently, he hacks into his sleeve and spits a mass of phlegm into the dirt, wheezes. Could use a smoke and a shot or something. Bah, keep moving. Skulks past the cotton candy stand and around the fortune teller's tent. No use drawing it out any further. It's time. Bring on the clown. Jeffrey paces slowly from the shadows, large imposing, smeared in grease paint, wearing a ridiculous coat of stripes, polka dots and patches, and the blade, beauty in simplicity. That's all it takes. Mustache squeals like a pig and scurries, all according to plan. Corral him past the pony stables, around the freak show, and cut him off. Give him nowhere to run but the haunted hostel, and really have some fun with the chump. Mustache sprints towards the rundown shack, covered in spatters of red paint and cheap imitation spider webs. But then, he turns, beelines away from the haunted hostel, and towards, no, not that, the fun house of friendship. All the makeup in the world can't cover the disgust. A deep, resigned sigh. Jeffrey stands in front of a bright pink and blue building painted in smiling, cartoonish faces of giraffes, elephants, and bears. A sign on the front says, 50 cents admission. You're in for a ton of safe, friendly fun. Oh, damn it all. Dark. Jeffrey hears Mustache bumping around up ahead, but can't see a thing. He fumbles with wires, jams them at a wall, searching for an outlet. Bingo! Colorful lights flood over him. Playful music fills the area. An animatronic dog stares at Jeffrey with dead plastic eyes. Let's be friends. Jeffrey delivers a solid kick to the dog's chest. Let's be f f f f f f f f f f Moving on. As soon as Jeffrey reaches the hall, he's overtaken by a teddy bear parade. Cartoonish animatronics emerge from the walls, singing, smashing cymbals, playing flutes, or at least pretending to. Crackling music plays from speakers above, singing a stupid song about hugs, bringing the world together. Jeffrey elbows his way past Billy Bear and Dingles, buries a blade into Laffy's neck gets tangled up by Terry Tickle's outstretched arms, smashes off Popo's lower jaw. Before he knows it, he's waist-deep in the ball pit canal, navigating the balloon forest. And that's where he finds Mustache, hiding at the feet of an animatronic tiger wearing a British guard's uniform. Oh, bah! The longer you cower behind Sir Cuddlepuss, the more I'm gonna make this hurt. Mustache makes a run for it. Jeffrey pulls a bottle of afterpiece tonic from his inner pocket, gives it a swirl, and hucks. Glass shatters. A thick cloud of fumes envelop Mustache. The man stumbles and coughs, looks around in confusion. Chris crosses his feet as if each one wants to go a separate way. Jeffrey socks the idiot in the side of the head, knocking him unconscious. Time to go home. The man with the mustache is huddled in the corner of Jeffrey's trailer, babbling, crying, pleading his case. Jeffrey isn't listening. All he sees is the finger and the puddle at mustache's feet. Jeffrey knows what it means. The man's realized he has one chance at survival and his fight or flight just kicked in. But Jeffrey doesn't care. He knows he's already won. The finger of chaos is as good as his. The memories of his father are already shifting. A large, horrible man towering above, bellowing. No, that isn't it. Think, Jeffrey. A weak, slouching alcoholic, stammering and slurring, too pathetic to control him. The outbursts, nothing but the fury of a coward. 
the parody of a powerful man. A joke. Mustache jumps up, reaches for the bottles of chemicals on the counter. Predictable. Jeffrey bellows laughter as he grabs the man's neck and slams him to the floor. Puts his full weight onto Mustache, grips his throat and squeezes. You wanna play with chemicals, do ya? I don't even know what would happen if those mixed. Hallucinations, euphoria, uncontrolled flatulence, <laughs> death. Jeffrey thinks this over as he repeatedly smacks Mustache's head into the floor. They all sound like hilarious endings, and why not add some uncertainty to the mix? He doesn't need to fear chaos anymore. He can handle it, and hell, he deserves a little fun. You want to play one last game? <gasps> okay, Mustache. Let's play.